Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, today is Wednesday, June the 24th, and this is our daily word of encouragement. Uh, you know, this is the week where I would usually be at Camp Edisto uh, leading the week of camp that I normally do, which is intermediate week for rising fifth and sixth graders. Uh, unfortunately, camp this year was one of the many casualties to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but I, I really miss camp. Um, I can't remember really ever a summer of my entire life that I've ever not spent at least some amount of time at camp. Uh, growing up, my parents were in ministry, and so I, they worked at camp almost every summer. I know my dad was there almost every year. And so I imagine that even as a young child, before I was able to, to attend camp myself, I would have been there. Um, and then, of course, uh, all through growing up, going to camp, going back and serving, doing whatever I could, working in the kitchen, washing dishes, being a, a counselor once I was old enough, and then, of course, all the years that I've been in ministry, um, it's just where I've always been and spent time with. I loved uh, being a part of the camp, the church camp experience. In fact, when I grew up, uh, it was called Christian Service Camp, and it was not just geared towards um, teaching us the Word and introducing us to Jesus and leading kids to making that decision for Jesus Christ, but it was also helping to model for us what it meant to be involved in Christian service. You know, there were a lot of young people who not only gave their lives to, uh, to Jesus at, at a week of church camp, but committed to lives of ministry, whether that be in paid positions of ministry, working within the church or other Christian organizations, uh, going on the mission field, uh, but or even just serving Christ in whatever we do, whatever career we find ourselves in. And so that was just really ingrained in me early on, just this concept of if you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to be a servant. In fact, I, I've put this challenge out there before that even I, I defy anyone to read the scriptures, the New Testament, the Gospels, and even if you don't come away with the reality that Jesus is the Son of God, He is the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior of the world, I defy you to read it and come away with any other conclusion that Jesus was a servant. Um, this man lived and loved uh, to serve others, to give of himself to other people. And so, um, growing up at church camp, that's just something that was really, really instilled in me, is that when you love Jesus, if you follow Jesus, you're going to, you're going to serve others. And uh, in all the opportunities I've had to lead weeks of church camp, um, I've tried to build that within, the, no matter what the theme is, that was going to be a part of what we really focused on. And there's a couple of things, those of you who serve with me at camp uh, are familiar with some of these things that I, I've tried to do in the past and try to really hit that, that theme home. Uh, one thing that we always do every week of camp is... I have these service bracelets, and at the beginning of the week, I pass out the bracelets to um, several different uh, campers and staff that are there, and it's kind of a pay it for it sort of idea. So if you've got a bracelet, the idea is that you are on, you're on task, you're on duty. Your job is to find and look for ways, to be observant, to find ways that you can love and serve someone else, um, and then once you serve them, once you've shown compassion or kindness to them, you then take that bracelet off and you give it to them, and now it's their turn to go and do and like for someone else. And the goal every year is to try to see if we can get all those bracelets to be passed around the entire camp uh, family uh, that's there that week before the week is out. And we always make it happen. Sometimes it goes through a couple of different times, but make sure that everybody is hit. And so that's one thing we always do. Another thing that I actually haven't done in a few years because um, my kitchen staff lovingly told me that it kind of drove them crazy because it was kind of made things chaotic. But one of the meals of uh, week of camp we would call a love feast. And at the love feast, uh, before we would go in, I would say, okay, one rule is you cannot do anything for yourself. And I, that's the only rule I give them for supper. So you couldn't fix your own plate. Uh, you couldn't get your own drink. Now, we did let people feed themselves because that could get really messy. But the idea was is that we were trying to teach the kids to be mindful of the needs of others. And so if no one else was looking out for you, then you might go and get a plate for somebody else and, and drink for them. But then you may sit down and, and just sit there waiting until somebody says, oh, wait a minute, I need to take care of your needs as well. And it was interesting. Sometimes kids would kind of partner up and provide like a little transaction. Well, I'll go get your plate if you get mine. And that would kind of give us a good opportunity to talk about, well, is that, is that true service? If you're doing something for somebody else only because of what you're going to get back in return, is that real service? And so it always became a really uh, an opportunity for us to talk about what, what true servanthood and a servant's heart and servant's spirit was all about. Um, but one of the things uh, that definitely has been uh, the most meaningful to me to do, to be part of, and to experience that I've done, and I don't do it every year at camp, but... Um, 
periodically from time to time I will do a, a foot washing with our students and um, it's usually unexpected and they don't really see it coming sometimes we'll do it in the midst of one of our Bible studies or classes uh, one time you know it might be part of the message I've even done it as a part of a meal uh, just as Jesus did it with his disciples at the Last Supper and I can remember the very first time that I did this was way back in when I was serving as a youth pastor in Georgia and I, I got my staff in on it with me and told them that in, in our teams and in our small groups we were going to work we were going to spend time washing the feet of our campers now if you've ever served at a week of camp uh, you know that you know you can get kinda dirty and um, especially that uh, campers of a certain age don't tend to shower every day they're, they're supposed to and we intend for them to some of them think like the pool counts for the shower but um, they're not always uh, the cleanest, and certainly their feet are far from being the cleanest parts of their body. So I didn't really anticipate uh, exactly how dirty uh, that water was going to get. Um, but you know, it was probably a pretty accurate portrayal of what Jesus had to face that night of the Last Supper. I mean, the primary mode of transportation for Jesus and the disciples was their feet. Uh, they had cars. Most of the, you know, they, didn't, they didn't ride a horseback or on the back of a donkey. Most places they went. In fact, the only, the only time we know that Jesus ever did that was when he entered into the city of Jerusalem uh, earlier on that, of that, that week on that Sunday. And so the disciples' feet would have been just dirty and grimy. No wonder it was the job usually of the lowest ranked servant in the home to have to do this for the guest of a feast. No one had taken that job or responsibility. I'm sure none of the guys wanted it and may not probably not have been used to being served in quite that capacity. But Jesus wanted to make a very clear point about what it meant to be a part of his kingdom that night. And so at this Passover meal that he was hosting, he got up from the meal, from, from the host spot at the center of the table, the, the spot of position and priority that all the disciples have been kind of, uh, you know, uh, fighting each other for all night long, wondering you know, who's gonna, who the greatest was in his kingdom. Jesus got up from that, that position of, of priority and, and, and lordship over these men. He took off his outer garments and he wrapped a towel around his waist. And he willingly took the position of the lowest servant in the home to demonstrate just how important these men were to him. In fact, in John chapter 13, it begins that passage by saying this. It was just before the Passover feast and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The full extent of his love. I love you so much that I'm going to demonstrate it to you through this genuine act of humble service. Now, when Jesus finished washing them to feed all the disciples, he came back to his rightful position as the host of the meal, uh, their teacher and their Lord, and he said these words to them. He says, do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that's what I am. But if I, your teacher, have washed your feet, you also, so you also should wash one another's feet. I've set an example for you that you should do as I have done to you. So what Jesus wants us to clearly understand, he performed this beautiful object lesson on the night that he was going to be betrayed and ultimately would go to the cross. What Jesus wants us to completely understand is that if we're going to love like he loves, we can't do it without serving. Now, I'm not calling my challenge today. My love challenge is not for me to go and uh, wash the feet of all the people who live in your home or of everyone that you work with, unless you feel the Lord calling you to do that. But what I am going to call you to do is to do and find ways of humble service that you can demonstrate that will be a tangible expression of exactly how you feel about the people that God has blessed your life with. You can't love Jesus, you can't know Jesus without serving him, or without giving of yourself completely to the people that he's placed in your life. So let me pray for us together that we can serve Christ with that spirit of love and compassion. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, again, we just thank you so much uh, for your presence in our lives. We thank you for the way that you uh, humbled yourself by coming into this world to become one of us, Lord, so that we might know you and experience you. Lord, your love is like no other. And you demonstrated that love for us by going to the cross. But even uh, before you got to the cross, Lord, you showed us what true love looks like through your genuine, authentic acts of compassion and service. Lord, I pray that same spirit be present in our heart today. Lord, help our love for others be seen uh, in real and tangible ways through the ways that we serve. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your love for us. We pray these things in your name. Amen. God bless you guys. 
I love you and hope you have a great day.